So Alexis Sanchez joined Manchester United. Henry Mkhitaryan goes to Arsenal. And there's some Galaxy news here and there. And MLS just launched some new jerseys for some teams. Let's talk about that. Good Galaxy afternoon, this is Football Galaxy and welcome to the Football Galaxy Show, episode 1. Today we got a great show for you tonight, we got some Galaxy news, we got some big transfer news, and we got some new jerseys launched in the world of a Major League Soccer. So without further ado, let's get right to it, shall we? Starting with my very favorite club, Los Angeles Galaxy, boom! The 2018 home kit that we've been waiting for since December of 2017. Look at that marvel, look at that beauty, look at that Gorgeous, gorgeous thing right there. I th I say, in my opinion, it looks classy, it looks retro. Someone can just look at it and you say, that is the LA Galaxy, isn't it? I mean, it has the colors, I love it. I really just love it. Now, I've been saying some to some people that the 2016 primary jersey one, which was continued into 2017, that was my favorite LA, LA Galaxy jersey from then. Now, I have to say that this one is actually my favorite now. Obviously, second place is a 2016 primary jersey. After that, I'm not sure. I think I think this gives me an idea to do a video of top 10 LA Galaxy jerseys. So I might do that later on. But it's just a marvel. I love it. I love everything about it. The colors, the sash, especially the sash. Everything about it looks awesome. A new era, a new jersey, a new hope. And a new team for the Galaxy. Next up on our list, we got none other than the Portland Timbers. Check it out, folks. The 2018 Portland Timbers Away Kit. And my gosh, I have to say, it looks awesome. I am so glad they finally got rid of the stupid black and red jersey. It looks so horrible. It's like, what are we talking about? Lancy United now? But finally, a freaking jersey where someone can say, hey, look at that. It's Portland Timbers. So I'm really glad they went with that with this new design. Apparently it's a retro look, and it does look like a retro look. I love it. I really love the gold and green with it. It looks pretty good. And I'm pretty sure the fans of Portland Timbers love it as well, so I'm happy for them. Next on the list, we got none other than, well, I already said none other, none other than, Philadelphia Union. Check it out, folks. For those who are the Union fans, welcome and say hello to the 2018 primary jersey. And I have to say, it looks stupendous. It it's a complete new design. I like it. <coughs> I love the blue with it. I love the gold with it. I like how I like the strips of it, like you know, in the middle. It looks like a really good design, and, and I, that's the thing about that's the thing about new jerseys. They look good when it's a complete new design. With just like with Portland Timbers, the away kit, a complete new design. This one, a, a, a new design, and that's the thing that makes it so good. That makes it, that makes it look so awesome. It just looks awesome. That yeah, just just I'm not good with words. I'm pretty sure the fans of Philadelphia Union are enjoying this new jersey, and I'm, I can't wait to see them play in the field like this. I think it's gonna look awesome. And last in our list, we got Real Salt Lake producing their 2018 primary jersey as well as Philadelphia. But check it out, folks. Um, well, it kind of looks like every normal jersey they've had so far. I mean, it's red, it's always been that yellow, it's always been that navy blue. It looks good, I really do like it. I like how there's, there's, there's those skinny, bright red lines that shine within, like, the light of the sun. So it looks kind of good. Other than that, it looks pretty much the same. I mean, not saying it's horrible, not saying it in a bad way, but I think it looks good. I mean, someone can totally tell it's Real Lake. They can tell the difference between Manchester United or Arsenal, or any red team exists out there. And I personally like it. I, I like it a lot, actually, yeah. Anyway, um, later on, I'm going to make a video based on a review of every single MLS jersey for 2018. So far, there's been like about, uh, I want to say like about eight or seven or six. I think I want to go with seven uh, new jersey launches so far compared to 23 teams that are in the league. So we still have a lot of we still have a lot of teams to launch their jerseys, but when they do, rest assured that I will do a review video for that. And like I said earlier, I will do a top 10 LA Galaxy jersey pick, which are my favorites. As you know, my first one is 2018 kit. My second one is the 2016 primary jersey. And maybe third is the 2017 away kit. 
but we'll just save that for some other time. Right now, next on your agenda, I want to make a review, which is so f I don't know if it's one hundred percent sure, but this is apparently um, produced, uh, brought to you by Lineup app. Download anytime on iPhone or Android. The twenty eighteen LA Galaxy squad. I was looking earlier in the LA Galaxy app and the MLS app, and according to them, this is officially. The 2018 starting 11 for the LA Galaxy. Now, let's take a review on this, shall we? For one thing, LA Galaxy already have a heck load of players. You can see in the substitution, it's like, there was, there's like more than 14 subs to be exact, actually. I couldn't even fit all of them into the sub, into the sub, um, like, you know, like putting it, like, in the game. I couldn't put that much subs in it, but look at that. The squad looks good. It's a classic 4-2-3-1, the most popular. It's like and victorious formation in the world of soccer. And it looks okay. Ola Kamara in front with the three the three great players, Roman Alessandrini, Gio De Santos, and Sebastian Legette. Then down comes Perry Kitchen, the new veteran, and Jonathan Los Santos. And then for the defense, Rolf Feldster, Ashley Cole for Captain Jorgen Shelvik and Daniel Sterry. So it looks pretty good. And these are the official numbers for the players themselves for the LA Galaxy. For those who do not show the numbers, Jonathan Santos, he's still number 8. Perry Kitchen holds number 2. Giro Santos still keeps number 10. Lucky him. And, um, I think that's it. Oh, yeah, Ashley, Ashley Cole, he's still number 3, which is good because that's the number. And he deserves to keep that number. I'm glad, and I'm really glad Sebastian Legge is returning for the 2018 season. All good and healthy, so don't worry about him. I think he's going to do great. Let's hope that the boy comes back to make his revenge after losing, after not showing up in the 2017 season. We got Chris Ponius in the substitutions, along with along with Drew Sconrich the, the, from the draft. Also, Thomas Hilliard Arx, I think that's how I pronounce his name. Bradford Jameson IV, Jao Pedro Baggio Husidic, Brown Sylvester, Emma Clementa from Sacramento Republic FC, Hugo Arellano, Michael Cioni, Nate Schultz, Seven Carrasco from Orlando City, Emmanuel Boateng, and Dave Romney on the subs, including Ariel Lasseter, who who I couldn't put there because, you know, all the, of the subs were filled up, so I couldn't put him there. But this is, ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 starting 11 of the LA Galaxy, and... If you didn't see my previous video, I did an experiment of how this squad was. They played against, it was in the Soccer Manager 2018 game, and they, I played against, so I mean, Seattle Sounders FC. They tied 0-0. None of them could score a goal, but I'm going to play more goals, I mean, more games with this squad and see how it, how it goes and how we will be seeing them in the 2018 um, season. It will be an interesting preview and a look of how we could see this team Go to the glory road and hopefully win a 6th MLS Cup for the Los Angeles Galaxy. Now out of the Galaxy news and now into the transfer news. What ha finally happened we were waiting for since last year finally happened. Alexis Sanchez leaves Arsenal and goes to the unexpected team, not Man City, but Man United. I know I am a little bit late, if not, not even late about this. But I just want to review this transfer Amazing how Alexis Sanchez actually finally, for waiting pr pretty much half a year, he finally, finally got the chance to, well, to just get out of Arsenal and finally join a new team. Now, I'm not saying that it was a good thing that Alexis Sanchez got out of Arsenal. I'm just saying that he deserved to, I think it was a, it was about time he left Arsenal. Um... I think he did deserve to, to move into a new team. And I really was expecting him to join Manchester City. I could even see him wear the blue jersey. But I think I think everything will be good. I think, I think it will all go well with him and Manchester United. New experience, new team. Plus, he gets to play against one of my favorite European strikers, Ibrahimovic. I love that guy. I so wish he could join the Galaxy one day. But it is highly in, 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 um, improbable. Or unlikely, in other words. So yes, Alexis Sanchez has finally moved. The transfer, the rumors are all over. He is now in Manchester United. In exchange for Sanchez, Arsenal have gotten the striker Henry Mkhitaryan, who is a really good striker for Arsenal, and I think it is a striker that Arsenal really needed. Now, here's the question everyone's been asking for. Now that they do, Wait, is it Henrik or Henry? Fred, is it Henry or Henrik? I think it's Henrik, isn't it? Anyway, the thing is that now that they got the striker... 
The question is that people have been asking, will Arsenal get Obama Yang? Which is a topic that we will be we will be um talking about very shortly. But we have to go on. Arsenal has got the player, so let's move on to the next transfer rumor. Or basically transfer new. Word got out that Subotic is leaving British Dortmund. Now I did forget what club he is going for. But it is official that he is leaving the BVB team. Now, he is an, a marvelous defender. He was a great player for British Dorman, a fun guy who loved celebrating and doing parties. Now, I did say that British Dorman was my favorite club. My favorite German club, actually. Not my favorite club, my favorite German club. And I like Subotic. I remember that I, that I really liked him being in my FIFA 15 Ultimate Team mobile game. Well, team, squad. And well, I guess I guess I guess you know what I think I guess I think it's the same thing with Sanchez. Both of them played for, both of them played in their team for a very long time, and then there just comes a time when they decide to move on and join a new experience and join a new club. So I think it's like a similar story to Sanchez, but yeah, I mean, I'm not really like a huge fan of Subotic, but I think I am gonna miss him for a BBB. So good luck Subotic in your new career and your new club. Speaking of BVB, let's go to the talk about Aubameyang. That long rumor that's been out since January about him going to Arsenal. Now, is that true or is that not true? Well, it's between 50-50. It really is no 60-40 or 70-30. What I will tell you, though, is that Dorman did warn Arsenal that the time is ticking if they do not respond or do not say a word of saying, yes, we'll buy him or no, we're not buying him. He will stay at Dortmund, but there's still no word for that. Basically saying this, basically in other words, this rumor is anonymous, as in it has no answer. We're still yet to know if it will be a no or a yes. Moving on. Word got out on MLS yesterday, well actually come to think of it this morning, that Club America are looking at Josie Altidore, the ultimate striker of Toronto FC. Not to mention a legendary, well not about legendary, but a true veteran in the U.S. national team, who did play for like about, I want to say like about two to three World Cups. This guy is a good striker. I want to see why Club America would not try to get him. The question is, will they actually transfer him to Club America now? If I were the coach of Toronto FC, I would totally say no to that because because Toronto does need Josie Altador. But still, that question is to remain between the two clubs. But right now, it's a 50-50. In other transfer news, it is official that Mix Discarude has moved to Manchester City. What a transfer. In fact, they are calling it one of the weirdest transfers by Man City in the transfer market of this year so far. I find it a coincidence that he had to that the ex New York City FC midfielder wanted to move to the same club. I mean wanted to move to a club that has a pretty much a similar Color scheme, and apparently they have the exact same sponsor. I find that funny. Not to mention a quick coincidence, but yeah, I think it's kind of cool. I think it's cool that he is one of what he's among one of the few Americans that play for England. Along with him is DeAndre Yerlin, who got called for the U.S. national team actually, and we shall see him play. Actually, come to think of it, since today is the day that USA is playing against Bosnia Her 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 um, um, yeah, Bosnia. I will. He probably will show up in today's game with uh, as with the U.S. national team. But we shall see. But it is official that Mixed Discrude has joined Man City. So, so congratulations, Mixed Discrude. In other news, we got word last week that LAFC is going to play against Borussia Dortmund, a friendly that is official, but the date is unknown. Now, the fact that the rookies are going to play against the bees is hilarious to believe. I personally do want to see that game. In order to get the rookies get their bucks their butts annihilated by my favorite German club. I find it funny that LAFC wants to do this, but I hope that the Bruce Dorman does beat Los Angeles football craps butt. And of course we will be seeing Christian Politic play against this crappy team. And I just hope that BVB destroys them, to be honest. Which they probably will. It's highly probable and as my friend Sherlock Holmes says, it is inevitable. So Good luck BBB and bad luck LAFC. On the same subject, it is also official that Chicago Fire is going to play against Bayern Munich in Unfriendly. It is also a tribute to Bastian Schweinsteiger, the awesome German veteran who joined Chicago Fire and MLS last year and made a sensation career and a debut for the, L for the Major League Soccer by, by basically putting Chicago Fire into the playoffs. Am I right, Fred? 
I think so. I have to check that data yet again. But he was a sensation. He was the captain of the MLS All Star, so it will be a tribute to him. And I think it will be interesting to watch Chicago Fire play against Bayern Munich. Uh, in my opinion, I actually do believe that Bayern Munich is going to beat Chicago Fire, if not to beat the crap out of them. Because think about it, they got Robin, they got Lewandowski, they got Arturo Vidal. They have major, major players in the team. Uh, and not to mention, they are one of the biggest German teams in the history of the Bundesliga. So, uh, I do think that Bayern Munich is going to beat them. Sorry, Chicago F Fire fans. But uh, hey, I'm rooting for Schweinsteiger, okay? I'm rooting for I'm rooting for him. And yeah, hopefully hopefully it will be a tie. Just like MLS Austrians and Real Madrid should have been a tie, but no, they had to go to penalties. So Real Madrid, Real Madrid could kick their butts. And by the way, the goalkeeper from Seattle Sounders, you dang that it suck as all heck, dude. I swear, even Brad Guzan could have made some sa some saves from that. Anyway, back to our show. The date of this game is unknown, but rest assured I will be in touch of the score and I probably will I, I will probably contact my Johnson John Michael to tell you the score probably in a podcast depending on what the date, date will be and depending on what video I will launch then at the time so that's pretty much it it is official Chicago Fire playing against Bayern Munich don't miss the game and folks probably the last thing I'm going to talk about today in the show is the explanation of soccer manager 2018 and what my squad is now you guys who have probably seen some soccer manager games through my channel. You might be asking, why the heck do you have all? I mean, Raul Jimenez, even Osano, and some other guys that are basically not in the LA, LA Galaxy squad. Well, I like to explain uh, what I'm trying to do, so that way you have an idea. Basically put, um, basically put that since the Galaxy had a horrible season last year, I was thinking of what good players would be awesome for the LA Galaxy. And one of the first people that got into my mind was the Mexican sensation Yervin Lozano, which is why he was one of the first guys I wanted to con I wanted to transfer in the team. The second guy that I thought would be awesome as a striker would be Eduardo Vargas, who plays for Tigres. Now I know I know that there are some who believe that he sucks playing as a club, but when he plays for country, in this case Chile, he is an awesome player. Which is why he why he, he got, did he, earn, why he earned the, the name the El name. Turbo Man. Man, Fred, he's I cannot a, he's speak today. a fast player. Which is why I'm a the... good player. Then I thought to myself, what's Which another good Mexican sensation? Bam, Raul Jimenez. I was watching some highlights from him in the Confederations Cup of 2017. And that golazo he did in that game, which I forgot against who? I want to believe it was Russia. It was incredible. Not to mention that Yuri Lozano also made an incredible performance against, I believe it was against New Zealand. And it was incredible. So those two players were definitely in the list of whom I had to get. And I did get them. Next, I went for a good defender. Because the Galaxy were horrible defense. So I went to Chivas and got Oswaldo Alanis. Who's a really good defender actually. After Chivas, I went to Club America to get a great striker. Who has been a great striker for about 2-3 to three or 4 years in Club America. He is a Colombian sensation. I got Darwin Quintero. Who did serve good, actually, for Club America, so that was actually pretty awesome. Along with Darwin Quintero, I also got Mateo Soribe, who was an amazing midfielder from Club America, and he did show his sensation um, potential when he played against Cruz Azul, so that was pretty cool, so I definitely got him. What's that, Fred? I'm saying sensation too much? Well, guess what? I got a freedom, uh, freedom, of, freedom of speech. Yeah, thank, thank you for finishing for me, Fred. Anyway, um, so let's see. After that, I got, I got, um, after that I got Rodolfo Pizarro, a midfielder from Chivas de Guadalajara. He was a really good player. He, in fact, he was called up to the Mexican national team. And he did score an amazing goal against Lobos Buap, which made me finally sign him to the LA Galaxy. So I stayed in this formation for a while. As you can see, I got Danny Jorgen Shelvik, Rolf Feltscher, and I got Omar G Gaber, because... And he did LAFC so bad that I wanted to steal a player from them. I kept Brian Rowe, and I I uh, sold um, Clement Diop and John Kempen. I had Tim Howard as goalkeeper earlier, but apparently in the game he retired. Quote, retired. So I got um, Oscar Jimenez from Club America to replace him. And he's been doing good, actually. Not that bad. Throughout the time, throughout like about two seasons, two, like two seasons the next, Darwin Quintero was going eh. Remember that this is a game, so when you press the continue button, 
Time passes fast, so within two weeks, you're probably finished one year. So, Darby Quintero was, like, doing, like, like, he's like, he's like Giorgio Santos, where for that time, he wasn't, he was, like, going low. Like, he started off really amazing, and then, throughout the time, he just didn't, couldn't score that much goals. So, I decided to buy the Chilean sensation, be quiet, Fred, Nicolas Castillo from Club Pumas, or Pumas Unam, who is a, an amazing striker. In fact, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, he is one of the top strikers in Nico Mekis. So I definitely joined, cut him for the LA Galaxy squad. And he has nine appearances with seven goals, if not even eight. So that is amazing from this guy. So I really do not regret getting him on the squad. I, I'm starting to put Yervin Lozano more because I thought that he could do more. And Raul Jimenez has just been a sensation. He has... Been scoring so many goals, so I'm definitely gonna keep him for more, for for a more while. For those who are asking, who the heck is that guy who with last name of Duca? He's just a guy who showed up in the game like as one of my reserves. So yeah, he was, he was like okay for some time. Now I want to sell him. And um, then later on, I decided to sign Miguel Almiron because since I figured that since I have so many Hispanics in this club, why not get the rookie sensation? Be quiet, Fred. Miguel Almiron from Atlanta United because think about it, this guy was great in Atlanta United in the inaugural season of last year. So I really wanted to get him, and he has scored about two goals so far. So I'm glad I got him on the squad. As you can see, I got Pele Van Holt, I got um, Daniel Steres, Badger Husidic, and Dave Romney. And still, who are like still in the early galaxy, so like, you know, I still I, I have them. But honestly, I actually do want to sell them. I want to sell Darwin Quintero because I think he has done great for the club. But it's like similar to Zardes where he was awesome. And now he's like not scoring goals. So I want to sell him. I want to sell Mateo Sordiva too. He's been great. But now that I have Rodolfo Pizarro as a midfielder. I think that, you know. I think like I want like his days in the club are coming to an end too. And I want to sell. Well, definitely that Duca guy. His name is Chance Duca. And Pelevin Holt. I want to sell Pelevin Holt. And I think that would be it. As you can see, they also got Car Carrasco because since the Galaxy signed Carrasco, I want to get him, which is the reason why I got Shelvick and, and Felcher in the first place. And that pretty much explains of how my squad is. Now, here's the pro about Soccer Manager 2018. You can play two different clubs at the same time. So I opened a different slot because I was in the 2021 season and I was like getting tired of it, so I wanted to play at the present season. So I began another slot, and basically I had to start all over again. I had none of the players that I signed recently or earlier, so pretty much that. And my main goal was to start all over again, and then, like you know, as as fast as possible, try to regain the players that I have already, and maybe later I could get the ones that I really want because there's three main players. No wait, there's four main players I want to get for the like Galaxy. I want to get Ibrahimovic, Chicharito, Jesus Corona. And Christian Pulisic, who obviously they have to be the most ex one of the most expensive players in the market, so I cannot get them. I cannot get them at this particular moment. But yes, throughout my plan was to throughout that throughout like throughout the season I would regain my players. But the first thing that I would do, which is probably my main, which was was my main goal actually, the first thing that I wanted to do is to sell the players that suck. Basically, saying the basically the players that Ziggy Smith. Um, took out of the galaxy and get every signed player as possible. So I, every signed player as possible. So Fred, if you can like try to make tr make a transition to the, to the second squad. Thank you. So you can see here, this is my second squad, and this is pretty much the starting eleven for the twenty eighteen for the twenty eighteen season for the LA Galaxy, as you can see here. So yeah, I pretty much got two thirds of the new signings. I couldn't get Emra Kilimenta because he plays for Sacramento, and the USL does not exist in this, this in CSM 2018. I couldn't get the two or the three draft players because there's no such thing as draft in this game, and um, I think that's about it of the new signings. But yes, yeah, you can see here, I pretty much got most of the signings. I got Ola Kamara striker. I got Perry Kitchen in midfield. I got Shelvick in center back. And I got Felcher as right back. I got, uh, let's see, where is he? I got, yeah, there you go. I got Chris Ponius for, uh, well, in subs. And, uh, and uh, 
Hmm, that's weird. I thought I had Carrasco. Well, basically, I have two missing players, Carrasco and David Bingham. I will get Carrasco. I cannot get David Bingham because apparently to the game, San Jose Earthquake says that he's too much, he's too much of a value, valuable player and he's not at he's not at selling. They're not he's not sold for any price. So that's a con there for SM2018. On the bright side, I have Ashley Cole and I surprisingly have Jermaine Jones. So yeah, so yeah, this is that's pretty much it. This is the second squad of which I started over again, and the first thing I pretty much did was try to get every new signing of the Galaxy. There you go, I only need Carrasco, and then I'm good to go. So, yeah, I'm probably thinking to add on Raul Jimenez and the others, but so far, I'm like, as you can see in the top right corner, I'm in the 2017 season, so I'm still, I'm still yet to go through stuff, and plus, I need money. So, yeah. Well, folks, I'm afraid that's the, that's the end of our time. Thank you again for watching the very first episode of the Football Galaxy Show, which has been brought to you by Kind Master. Download anytime on iPhone or Android. It is a great app for your phone to edit some videos, so I would highly recommend it. Also, it has been sponsored by CM 2018 because I'm showing the squad and by Lineup um, because I did show the LA Galaxy starting 11 preview. So download those apps at any time on iPhone or Android. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, or subscribe. And stay tuned on my channel for any more events that I might do, depending on what my mind goes first. Either some soccer matches, some FCSN podcasts, or episode 2 of the Football Galaxy Show, whichever comes first. But still, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next episode of the Football Galaxy Show. Besides that, have yourself a good Galaxy night.